welcome back to Yink's Weekly Displaced once again. My name is Yinka. In today's tutorial, we're going to be making this beautiful gown. This gown is divided into three parts. We have the upper bodice, we have the waistband, then we have the skirt. All right, make sure you remove two inches from all your circumference measurements. So, for example, my bust circumference is 40, but I'll take two inches out of it your to become neck, 38. From that bone that you have there, you're going to measure, you put your tape through and measure it all the way to whichever length you desire for your sleeve so just like i'm showing you inside this image here are the things i'm going to be using for this project i'm going to be using two years of scuba fabric and i'll be using some pearls to decorate the gown when i'm done so i have my hula gum there all right so the next thing you'll do now is to shake the direction of the stretch of the fabric the part that stretches the most is going to be for your circumference while the one that stretches the less you are going to be using that part as the length all right so after that now you can see from the picture the gown is divided into three parts we have the upper bodies we have the waistband then we have the skirt all right so the first thing i'll do is to cut the skirt part of the okay gown. so you can see the fabric is folded into two now after that i'll fold it over again into four Leaving a little space there for my zip allowance. So as you can see from the from the measurement, the length of working weight is 45, but instead of measuring 45, I will be measuring 46 and a half. Alright, so I'll be using one and a half at the same allowance at the hem. So I'll place the 46 and a half there at the lower part of the fabric I folded, then I'll measure it upward, like I'm showing you here, to my waist length. The waist length for the front here is 17.5. But I'm not going to be making a mark at 17.5 because I needed half inch to join this skirt part to the band. So I'll be making a point at 17 inches. So the actual waist length is 17.5 but then I'll measure 17 inches because I needed half inch to join this skirt part to the band. So I'll roll it like I've done now. I've rolled it. We are going to be inputting our circumference inches from the circumference measurement first. All right, so after removing the two, two inches from my circumference, my waist measurement is now 13 inches. So I'll divide the 13 inches by four and I'll put it on the waistline. That is the line I just ruled now. Then after that, I'll measure 8.5 inches downward for the hip line. The hip line is supposed to be eight inches, but you know I needed half to join this case to the band. So I'll make it 8.5 like I've shown. So I'll measure 40 divided by four on the hip line. That is 40 divided by four, that's 10. I'll measure 10 on the hip line. If you notice, I'm not adding seam allowance because this fabric is a stretchy fabric. You don't need any allowance. And whatever you have on the hip line, you are going to be minusing 1.5 from it. And then you put it at the end of your skirt. You know, on the hip, I have 10. Then at the lower part, I'll have 8.5 now. Then I'll use my ruler to connect these points together. Then I'll take my French curve, I will use it to connect the waistline to the hip line with the curved edge. Alright, so the, the, the next thing now is to mark half inch, like I'm showing you there for my zip allowance. I'm using just half inch for my zip allowance. So I'll just do that half inch all the way down. So when that is done, you're now going to be cutting it out. All right, so I'm done cutting. So the next thing you want to do now is to notch the center front. Then you notch the hip line. Notch the hip line. Then don't forget to notch the zip allowance as well notch the zip allowance like that that's it we're done cutting so by the time you open it this the front is just going to be into just one single piece like i'm showing you here because of the way the fabric is folded then you can see the back the back is into two pieces you can see so this is it we are done cutting the lower part of the gown. So the next thing now is to cut the waistband. So just take the remaining fabric. The width of your band is just going to be two and a half inches. You are not going to be folding it. It's not going to be on fold. It's just going to be a single piece like I've shown you here. And the length of your waistband is 
is going to be your waist circumference measurement minus one inch so the waist here is 32 minus one that's going to be 31 inch so the the length of the band is 31 while the width is going to be 2.5 inch so i'll just measure the 31 then i'll make a point so after that you measure the 2.5 inches randomly like i'm showing you here so that the line can be straight just measure the 2.5 width randomly like that then when you're done just use your ruler to connect it into a straight line so when you're done you're going to be cutting this out just cut it out so we are done cutting our band you can see it's into a single piece it's not folded it is just into a single piece so it's going to be on your waistline just like that just like i've shown you there to, then you keep that aside now we're going to be cutting the upper part of the gown so we're going to be cutting the upper bodies now so place the remaining fabric into two fold we're going to be cutting the back first then after that we're going to be using the back to trace out the front so after that you rule your zip allowance of half inch remember we use half inch for the skirt part so you use the same half inch on the upper bodies as well just rule half inch for your zip allowance after that you measure the back waist length minus two inches so the reason for removing the two inches is because we already used two inches as our waistband so 15.5 minus 2 will give me 30.5 i'll make a point there then i'll rule this line this now becomes my shoulder line then starting from my center back i'll measure the special measurement that i said we should take earlier on mine is 19 i'll measure that 19 inches then out of that 19 inches one is my same allowance for the sleeve so i'll just make a point like so so if you notice i did not add any allowance to the 13 and a half that i got it's because i already had half inch to the waistband making the waistbands to be 2.5 inches instead of two inches all right so after that i'll measure three inches neck width then i'll go to my sleeve length i'll measure one and a half inches downward so that I can get my shoulder slant. Then I'll connect these two points together. So the next thing I'm going to do, starting from my shoulder slant now, I'll measure 11 inches downward for the sleeve opening. So starting from my center back on the waistline, I'll measure quarter of my waist measurement exactly the waist measurement that you use on the skirt part that's what you are going to put there i use seven and a half on the waistline on the skirt so i'll just put the seven and a half on the waistline here at the upper bodies all right that is 30 divided by four all right so the next thing is just to use your french cuff to connect these two points together so connect your waistline to the sleeve part just like i'm showing you with the curve then I'll roll this line downward like that so the next thing now is to shape the neck I use 6.5 as the neck width then 7 inches as the neck depth if you don't want your own to be too open you can reduce your neck width and neck depth all right so I'll connect these two points together after that I'll add half inch to the shoulder that's the shoulder seam allowance. I had it half inch as the shoulder seam allowance like that. Alright, so the next thing is to cut it out. Just cut it out. Alright, so we are done cutting. So that is the slip opening. This is the zip allowance here. This is the neckline and this is the waistline. Alright, straight away you can just use your shock to note it so that you don't miss it up. So put the remaining fabric into two folds. We are going to be cutting the front part of the upper bodies now. Alright, so when that is done,
you measure five inches randomly like i'm showing you here just measure five inches like that randomly measure five inches like that then you rule it into a straight line just rule it into a straight line after that pull the back on top of it align the zip allowance on the line that you just ruled now just like that after that you measure two inches downward from the back waist length like i'm showing you here two inches two inches all right so the lower part now is two inches longer than the back waist length and then is five inches wider at the center front all right so just with a slant you are going to connect that two inches to the side seam on the waistline from that your back waist seam just slant it to that two inches mark like i've done there all right now you are going to be shaping the neckline just through the neckline all the way down like i'm showing you here just slant it like I'm showing you here, just roll it slantly like that to that extension of two inches downward. All right, just like that. Then after that, you cut it out. All right. So after cutting it out, this is what you have. So the next thing you want to do now is to measure three inches. Starting from your waistline there, measure three inches towards the sleeve side. Measure three inches like that. Then use your ruler to connect from that your three inches mark to the shoulder like i'm showing you that is the shoulder of the sleeve just use your ruler to connect it together like that then you can cut this out so when you're done cutting it out the next thing you want to do now is to put your notch on the center front so just notch your center front like that notch your center front like that all right so by the time you open it you have something like this all right this is the front this is the neckline of the front we are going to be using bias to finish it then by the time you open it you have it into two pieces and it's going to be like this you're going to gather this front here you're going to place it to the waistband And here is the back. That is the skirt part of the gown. We have two pieces of the skirt part for the back. Then that is the upper bodies. We also have two pieces for the upper bodies of the back. So we are going to be sewing our gown now. And I'm starting with the lower part. That is the skirt part. This is the back. I'll put it on top of each other right side facing right side. And from the waistline, I'm going to measure 7 inches downward. That's going to be for the zip opening later on. Then from that 7 inches mark, I'm going to sew it close all the way down to the hemline. But if you are going to be putting slit on your own, before you get to the hemline, just measure 7 inches like that then you stop at that point just backstage and stop all right you can see just seven inches but if, but i'm not going to be putting slit on my own so i'm just going to sew it close all the way down so when that is done this is the way it's looking the next thing you want to do now is to m the lower part remember we had a seam allowance just sew it with the seam allowance we had it 
all right i'm done i'll keep that aside i'll take the front part of the skirt and i'm just going to m the lower part just m it fold it once then fold it over again using the same allowance we put you know we put one and a half for the same allowance of the hem line all right so just sew it so when that is done this is how it's looking so i'm going to take the back again i'm going to put it on top of the front i'll just put it on top of the front like this right side facing right side then i'm going to sew the sides together with one inch allowance remember we did not have allowance on this uh, part is because it stretches you can see the the material stretches so just sew the sides with one one inch allowance so when you're done with one side just turn it to the other side and sew using one inch seam allowance so i'm done joining the sides together you can see this is the way it's looking the next thing i'll do now is to bring it to the right side so i'll just bring the fabric to the right side like that then i'll take my waistband and i'm going to attach it to the waist area so this is my waistband here i'll mash it right side to right side starting from the zip allowance then i'll sew it all around the waist area so when this is done this is the way it's looking you can see this is the waistband and this is the zip opening at the back you can see this is the way it's looking then what i'll do now is to keep this one aside then, then i'll work on the upper bodies this is the front part of the upper bodies so what i'll do next is to use my bias I'll just use my bias and finish the neckline. So put your bias on the right side of the clothes, then you sew it all around the neckline. So when you are done, flip it to the wrong side and top stitch. So one side of the front is ready. You take the other side and then you do the same thing. Just use the bias to turn the neck line so when i'm done this is the way it's looking i'll take it aside and i'll take the back piece this is the back piece here you can see it's into two as well so i'll just use the bias and finish the neck line so when i'm done using the bias to turn the neckline i'll place one front on top of the back I'll face them right side to right side like I'm showing you here then you do the same thing to the other side after that you're just going to sew the shoulder join the shoulders together all right So when you're done with one side, do the other side, place the front on top of the back and then you sew the shoulders together. Make sure you are facing right side to right side. All 
All right, so I'm done joining the shoulders together. The next thing I will do is to use bias and finish the sleeve opening. Don't forget the bias, you sew the bias on the right side of the dress, then you turn it to the wrong side and top stitch. Please kindly subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the next one. So I'm done with it now. This is the way it's looking. So the next thing I'll do now is to close the side with one inch seam allowance. So I'll take to the sewing machine then I'll close the side. When you're done closing one side, turn it to the other side and close the other side as well using one inch seam allowance. All right, so when all is done, I'll take the pin that I use in holding the center front together. I'll take it off. So when you take it off, this is how it is. You have two pieces. We have the left side, we have the right side. Then now I bring it to the right side. You can see this is the way it's looking on one side. Then this is the way it's looking on the other side. So I'll put them aside now. I'll take the lower part of the gown, that is the skirt part. I'll match it together like that. I'll match the center front together. You can see that is the zip opening there. I'll match it together. Then I'll notch the center. I'll just notch the center like that. And I'll also locate the side seam and I'll notch it as well. Just notch the side seam like that. Don't forget the zip allowance is half inch. Just, just locate half inch and then you notch it like that from the zipper side. All right, so I'll take the upper bodies again. So I'm going to be making my pleats now. All right, so I'll take one side off, then take the other side. I'm working. I'm going to be working on the front part. This is the center of the front. Then I'll make my pleat, my first pleat. I'll mash it with the center of the center front, ensuring I have three inches left for my overlap. There, like that. You know, we are going to overlap it, so you need to have excess there. Then you pin it, then you make your next pleat. The width of your next pleat should be the same as the first, and the distance between them should be about one and a half inch apart. So I've made my place, so I'll keep it aside. I'll take the other side. This is the other side. I'll make my pleat again. Then I'll pin it. Just the way you did for the first part. That's the exact thing you're going to be doing here. Then after that, you make the second pleat. Ensuring the width of the pleats are equal with the first part. That's me trying to check whether my pleats are equal. Alright, so they are equal. I'm okay with it. Then I'll pin it. Alright, so when this is done, it's time to take the, the skirt part. This is the skirt part of the gown. So next, I will take one side of the upper bodies. I'll match it together with the skirt at the zipper side, right side facing right side, like that. Then I'll sew with half inch seam allowance. Please ensure your size seam are aligning properly. Just 
just sew it all the way across please don't pull or stretch your fabric just let it sew naturally don't pull it and don't stretch it all right so when you're done sewing you backstitch you take it off then the next thing you do is to take the other side you can see this is the way it's looking i've joined one side so i'll take my pin off so now i'll take the other side right side facing right side at the zipper side again then i'll sew this time around the skirt is on top while the upper body is at the bottom part then i'll sew it across so when i'm done stitching this is the way it's looking you can see it's already looking beautiful so i'll take my zip now i'll turn my uh, dress to the back part then i'll fix my zip this is your zip place it right side to right side on the zipper side then you sew you know we we are having half inch as our zip allowance so just sew with half inch allowance So when you're done with one side, you close the zipper, then you turn it inside out, turn your fabric inside out, then you sew from the down part. You sew from the down part. Alright, so I'm done fixing the zip. This is how it's looking. Please ensure that your lines are matching ensure that your lines are matching all right so the next thing now is to just aim the zipper at the neckline like that like i've shown you there And that's it we are done please ensure that the size seam also match it's very important sure the other side is matching as well and that's our gown is ready so the next thing i'll do now is to attach the pearls so just take your pearl apply your glue then you place it on the fabric <coughs> As you desire. Okay, so here is the spell. So the back and the front. <laughs> the sides. 